Good evening and welcome to the very first Six News Bulletin for 2022. Darby Travers filling in for Leo tonight. Celebrations across Australia and around the world have farewell 2021 and welcomed in 2022. There were firework displays in many cities, while others chose to spend the night at home, whether that was by choice due to warnings from authorities or because they were one of the many Aussies self-isolating. And now two days into the new year, there's a sense of hope among some, while others are nervous as COVID cases climb nationwide. Political reporter Ronan McKinnon for the first time begins our coverage from Brisbane. From New Zealand to Sydney, Perth and everywhere in between, the world farewelled 2021 and welcomed 2022. In New York, Paris, Tokyo, Rio de Janeiro, Abu Dhabi and Sydney, dazzling spectacles lit up the skyline across seven states and territories in Australia. There was over 28 displays with tons of fireworks being set off barges and bridges. Although South Australian Chief Health Officer Nicola Spuria urged South Australians to have the quietest New Year's ever and to meet up with people on Zoom, thousands gathered at Rymel Park to celebrate the festivities and fireworks. This comes as 160,000 Australians were forced to spend New Year's Eve in isolation. Many people were too concerned to go out and celebrate the end of a turbulent year following the surge in COVID-19 cases across the world. England Mayor confirming its firework display in the heart of London to go ahead despite England recording 183,000 cases on Friday. Across the globe there were smiles, cheers and happy times as we farewell 2021 and say hello to 2022. Roman McKinnon, 6 News. North Korea has welcomed in the new year with a bang. Images from state TV show fireworks displays in the country's capital where large crowds gathered to welcome in 2022. The country's leader Kim Jong-un says North Korea's economy will be the main focus this year as the country faces what he described as a great life and death struggle. According to the BBC, he acknowledged the harsh situation in 2021 and set an important task for making radical progress in solving the food, clothing and housing problem for the people. December marked 10 years since he came into power. New South Wales has recorded another big jump in COVID cases overnight. Down from yesterday, however, the state's health department reported 18,278 new cases of just over 90,000 tests, with 1,606 people in hospital, 83 in ICU, and sadly, two further deaths. 93.6% of people aged over 16 in the state are now fully vaccinated. It is down from the 22,577 cases announced yesterday, which was a record for any state and territory in Australia since the pandemic began. Health workers in the state will now be given an isolation exemption if they are a COVID close contact and do not present symptoms amid the surge in Omicron infections. A man has set himself alight in Melbourne while reportedly screaming about Victoria's vaccine mandates. And we do warn you the details in this report may be confronting. One witness who was dining at a nearby restaurant told the Herald Sun that the man poured gas on himself and on his car, adding he was screaming about the mandate, saying no vax ID and throwing books. Police officers and firefighters covered the man with water before he was then taken to hospital in an ambulance with life-threatening injuries. Another witness said the man's skin was burning until he was covered with water, saying he was off his face screaming about the mandates. The incident happened last night in the suburb of Richmond. And if you or anyone you know needs help, Lifeline is available at 13 11 14 or on their website, lifeline.org.au. 
And staying in Victoria now, the state's new pandemic laws have allowed new health advice to be revealed, showing that the government did not put in place recommendations from Chief Health Officer Brett Sutton. The reports show that in addition to an indoor mask mandate that was put in place, Sutton also advised that density limits returned and indoor dance floors be banned, telling Health Minister Martin Foley on December 23 that it would slow the rate of increase in infections, allowing more people to get a booster shot prior to potential exposure. But the ABC reports Foley did not introduce those rules, saying they could negatively impact hospitality businesses and potentially undermine confidence in the government's public health response. Victoria's daily cases continue to break new records amid fears that New Year's celebrations could lead to super spreader events, with a spike in infection seen following the Christmas period. Checking in with tomorrow's weather forecast now right across the country, partly cloudy, 31 in Brisbane, 26 in Sydney, thunderstorms expected, 28 in Canberra, 21 in Melbourne, 18 in Hobart, heavy clouds, 26 in Adelaide, getting very warm in Alice Springs, 41, 33 in Perth and Darwin, showers atop of 32 degrees. And just before we go today, a quick note that from today, 6 News is officially in election mode. What that means, we'll now begin to focus on the upcoming federal election, which will likely be held in either March or May. We will uh, give you interviews, investigations, special reports, and of course, our fact checks. We'll still though cover all of the other stories that matter, but we'll make sure you stay up to date with the campaign even before it officially begins. Of course, make sure to follow our new federal political reporter, Ronan McKinnon, who you saw earlier. Stay informed with everything happening out of Canberra and right across the nation. That's it for 6 News this Sunday evening. You can stay up to date with the latest news by heading to our website, 6newsau.com, and by following us on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Let's Just search 6newsau to find us. Leo will be back next Sunday. For now, though, I'm Darby Travers. Thanks so much for your company, and have a good night.